Ladies and gents, welcome back. It's been a few weeks. I enjoyed my time over in Japan. For three weeks, I was gone, and here we are back. Now, we're going to be getting into talking about the housing woes that Canada is dealing with at the moment. Not only that, me personally, I got five weeks before I've got to get out of here. I got I was given my notice just before my three-week vacation uh, to get out of uh, our rental property, and I'll get more into that in this story. Now, the federal government is concerned about Canada's housing problem. Finally, finally. Oh, it only took about nine years to figure out that it's been an issue. It has been an issue. And uh, Canadians are largely dealing with this right now. Sean Fraser, the Minister of Housing, used to be the Minister of Immigration. It's funny how one of these is leading into the problem for the other one. They just really don't want to talk about that part of it. Canada has a choice, he says, on X. Do we want to talk about the housing crisis or do we want to solve it? As for where the federal government stands, it's time to build. It's time to build, he says, and here he gets into it. We're living through a housing crisis, but we can solve it. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to build more homes. One way we can help is cutting taxes on home builders. We've removed the GST from new apartment construction, and we're putting new measures in place, like the ones that Canada used in the 1970s to help set a record level of home building. Yeah, it's largely not done really much of anything at all. Now, this is familiar. I mean, we're seeing this all over the place. Liberals say that their plan is to, for, to solve this crisis that they've largely constructed is to build 3.9 million homes by 2031. Where have we heard promises like similar to this and how have those been going? Well, here's an old promise. Two billion trees. Oh, okay. you've probably heard us share that number before. It's part of our plan for a clean, green future. Yeah, you've heard that plan uh, shared quite a bit. Uh, how's that going, by the way? Canada falling short of pledge to plant 2 billion trees by 2030. And this is, of course, uh, Global News reporting on this one. It was one of the signature elements of the Liberals' campaign platform in 2019. A promise to plant trees that will suck harmful greenhouse gas emissions out of the air. But a new report from Parliament's Environment Commissioner, Jerry DeMarco, says that unless Ottawa radically changes the way the tree planting program works, there's no way to hit that goal of planting two billion trees in a decade. Hey, what do you know? What do you know? It looks like they're not really going to be able to pull this kind of thing off. Now, here's a great thread from uh, Naya Fannerstill. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, on X about this particular thing. Hate to blow a hole in Sean Fraser's housing fantasy, but they make it so easy. Here's the government's plan to build 4 million homes in seven years. Now, the link is here. I'll make sure it's in the description down below. Everybody can go check this out for themselves. Solving the housing crisis, Canada's housing plan. And uh, yeah, well, what is it? They're going to build more homes. They're going to make it easier to rent or own a home. Wow. Um, yeah, it'd be really nice to find out how easy it could be to rent a home, uh, especially given my situation. Now, as I alluded to earlier in the video, uh, we've been given notice to leave our rental property. We have five weeks. That's it to get out. And it's really looking like there won't be an opportunity for us to uh, find anything similar to what we live in because we're paying rents that, you know, you would have probably paid 10 years ago and the market has completely changed. We're talking like, I'm not even kidding, houses in my neighborhood where I live are going for $4,000 a month and most people wouldn't be able to afford that. So we're probably going to have to pack up and leave the town that we live in. And uh, because I'm an American citizen, uh, there's lots of talks on this one. It would be a lot easier to just cross that border, hop that border, and then uh, take my skills as a mechanic and all the other skills that I'll bring with me. Uh, that, that's largely what's probably going to happen. I doubt that any of this is going to get fixed in the meantime. But let's move on with the story. Helping Canada, Canadians who can't afford a home. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? Well, let's look at it. So <clears throat> Naya also, you know, going on with this story. Uh, within its most, uh, within it is mostly things that the government can try to do, throw money at it, try to remove bureaucracy, and then throw more money at it. In fact, all we've been seeing is them building more bureaucracies around this, which is going to cost the average consumer more money in the end when it comes to these things. This uh, is the Trudeau spaghetti strategy 
throw everything at the wall and hopefully it sticks. So this is again a screenshot of that, uh, that website. However, the CMHC says Canada needs to build almost 6 million homes by 2030, not 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 the 5.8 or sorry, the what are they promising now? They're promising uh, a meager 3.9. We need more like 6 million homes at that rate. We're not going to be able to do this, which is 2 million more than the Trudeau government fantasy predict prediction says. So here is an article saying Canada needs 5.8 million homes new homes by 2030 to tackle affordability crisis, CMHC warns. Canada normally builds about 225,000 housing units per year. This is the plus or minus maximum production yield of the total construction industry. There is no pool of home builders sitting at home without work to do who can fulfill Trudeau's government fantasies. And things are going to get worse. Why? Well, it's because a lot of the people in the industry are retiring. Here's a, an article here. Ontario construction industry faces a severe labor crunch. It seems it's time. It's it's about to get worse. And here's a, here's an, an elderly, not an elderly, but an older aging trade worker guy giving the old, uh, well, we've seen this before, uh, Joe Biden wearing his hat backwards, his hard hat. And this is a little bit of tongue in cheek. I love, I actually love seeing that here in Canada. It's uh, estimated that almost 20% of workers in construction will retire over the next decade. 20%. That's crazy. The share of construction workers over the age of 55. It's really, really high. Uh, Build Force Canada estimated to, that to fulfill the Trudeau government housing fantasy, at least 500,000 more on-site construction workers are needed. The construction industry needs to grow by 83% immediately. This is fantasy. It's unbelievable. They were not going to get that. And of course, they want to open up immigration, which they've already opened up immigration. Immigration is just crazy at this point, where we're seeing millions and millions of people per year coming to Canada. And well, I mean, if a country that's only 40 million people, that's pretty huge. And where are we going to house all these people? Well, I will think about that later. Let's just worry about all the people that need houses now. The construction industry has already seen significant growth in employment in employment, but is 80,000 people short of current requirements. That's insane. And again, more, more people are going to be leaving the workforce than entering it. And to become a Red Seal electrician requires almost five years of schooling and on this job training. Carpenters, plumbers, etc. are no different. I've been through the apprenticeship program in Canada. I know exactly how this works. And half the time, you first you need to get somebody to sponsor you. It's not like you're just all of a sudden you're in the apprenticeship program. You got to be a greenhorn. You got to get in there. You might you might not get uh, the guys signing your paperwork at the first place that you end up working at. This is the reality of the situation. So you say five years. Uh, five years usually turns into like six or seven years of actually working in the trade before you actually get yourself through that five years of training. Construction is dominated by men. Ooh, this is a big problem for the Trudeau government. And I've seen this through the apprenticeship program. Uh, there's there's bigger incentives for uh, for women, by the way, or people who identify as women, if that's a thing. <laughs> if you identify as a woman, you get bigger grants, uh, by the way, uh, going through the apprenticeship program. Stuff that don't, that don't get advertised at you. It just happens to be once you're actually going through it. But I digress. It's dominated by men, and if we look at the entirety of unemployed young men, 15 to 44, it only equals about 550,000 people in all of Canada. They are not all going into construction. This is the reality. People entering into construction trades is also falling. Well, what happens when the, the school system tells you work smarter, not harder, and all this other stuff? Don't get into the trades. G get into coding, they told everybody, and those people are largely looking for work these days. Um, yeah, the, the trades are lucrative. They absolutely are. But yeah, the falling, falling numbers of people that want to get into the trades, I can attest to this. There's not a lot of people... Um, clamoring to come work in the automotive trade either uh even even though like you get your you get your certificate you're you're virtually um never gonna ever worry about getting a job 
but people just aren't entering it. Yet employment within within construction is at all time highs. So if you do have a trade in the construction industry, well, you're not without work, as that would in, would would basically point out. Now, uh, Naya keeps going on, says the point of all of this is to say that the government knows all of this. This isn't a mystery to them. The construction industry is too small to build what is needed, and the changes required to grow the construction industry by at least 85% is an impossibility in the next six to seven years. The Trudeau government housing plan is pure BS. And again, they know this. Yet the Trudeau government has no issue getting in front of the every and any microphone and straight up lie to you. Every media and elitist weasel who trumpets the government's talking point is also complicit. They will say anything, do anything, and spend anything to stay in power. This is the reality of the situation. They're only talking about this because it looks like there's an election coming up, and this is a big, hard-hitting issue for Canadians. Now, this doesn't look like it's going to be fixing anything anytime soon, especially when they're so hard-nosed on the immigration numbers. They just will not change those immigration numbers. And it's largely, in my opinion, because of the social security risk. They want to, if, if we don't have growing, uh, you know, new people entering the country, we don't have a tremendous birth rate in this country. So if we don't have a whole bunch of new taxpayers coming in, well, they're going to have a big issue when all the baby boomers retire in a few short years. But this is the reality of the situation. One more comment that came in on this thread was a really interesting one because you're going back to talking about the trees that they didn't plant. Uh, Laurie on Twitter here on X says, where are they getting all the trees? Where are the trees going to come from to build these to build one 3,000 square foot house takes approximately 150 trees. Not to mention, when you get those trees, you're going to need sawmills to actually cut them up into boards. And meanwhile, they're closing sawmills all over Canada. So where are we going to get building materials to do all of this stuff? One acre has about 160 to 180 trees. After replanting, take 20 years. it'll take 20 years to be able to harvest degrade lumber. 4 million times uh, 150, which is the 4 million houses that you need, it's going to take 600 million trees or approximately 3.15 million acres clear cut through the country. Now, how do you think that's going to sit with this guy who's also championing this budget and this plan to build all these houses. But I guess I digress on that one. They're not going to pull it off. They're not going to pull it off. So what do you think about this whole situation? We're in crisis in Canada at the moment, not just a housing crisis, but an entirely affordability crisis. Canadians are having a hard time to be able to afford anything. And, you know, we're seeing we're seeing self emigration in this country where a lot of people are actually leaving the country immigrants that who came here with a lot of promises they're going back to uh, their you know their home countries we're seeing a lot of canadians leaving en masse a record number of canadians leaving the country how is this going to play out i'd love to hear your opinions on this so leave a comment in the comment section down below uh we'll see you of course in uh in the next one uh, looking forward to talking about the the budget. You can catch that tomorrow morning with uh, myself and Marty up north. Anyway, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think, and then we'll see you in the next one. Keep on trucking.